And we're back with more of the Pope on Film. And if you're just joining us, uh, Bunny killed Roger Corman. It's time, Bunny! It's time. It's oh. time. Yes, Bunny, my friend, who is more than brother to me. And, I embrace thee. And you are uh, right. You are right, new chatter. Robot on robot crime is sad. It's, it's something sad. that we have to stamp out in this country. Yeah. God it's damn, sad. Elon. It is time once again for all of us here on the Pope on Film podcast to dougie our way into the second half of the show. And it is said second half, wherein we finally and eventually get around to discussing our all new high fat and now with 50% and more GMOs movie of the week. And this week we discuss an upcoming movie that has yet to be released in the States, but certainly has been released in other countries like uh, France and Spain. Uh, it's going to be released in states this summer. In fact, at the end of next month, this will get a wide release, and I'm really, really? excited about that. Yeah, it's the upcoming animated film. It's a bit confusing because it's an upcoming animated film that hasn't been released yet, but all over the world, it's already been released. And also, it was up for an Academy Award the, uh, last year. Yeah. So it's it it's all confusing, but. Our movie this week is Robot Dreams, the upcoming animated film about a dog and his robot friend. Bunny, first off, did you like this film? Did you like it? It was cute. It was cute. Well, I think it wasn't cute. I think it sucked ass. What do you think now, Bunny? Huh? <laughs> what do you think now? I can be contrarian <laughs> too, you son of a bitch. Yes, you can. It was it, it was good. it was a cute movie. It was I liked it. a little confusing at times trying to uh, follow what was going along. I, I was trying to put way more meaning into into things. Of course, I was high as fuck. Yeah. You know. At, at first, I watched it with Eleanor, and I'm like, is this really happening? Okay, so this is a dream. Okay, so now everything's real. Okay, so the robot's having dreams? I was not prepared for that. So I need to, to find out at what point is are things real and at what point are things dreams. I wasn't expecting the robot to be dreaming so much. And Eleanor goes, Other Mother, what's the movie called? Robot Dreams. Thanks for making me realize I'm a fucking idiot, Eleanor. <laughs> God damn But the it. dog was also dreaming. Yeah. And there were also intermittent hallucinations. Yeah. Uh, Eleanor Eleanor called it really quickly. And that was, uh, if you see the robot walking around with two feet, it's a dream. Yes. And it's like, oh, thank you, seven-year-old, for explaining this movie to me. Thank you so much. You, you've really helped out. So some people out there might not even know what this movie is, since it hasn't even come out yet in America. Technically, it's an upcoming movie. It's being mass released in the States at the end of next month, May 31st, 2024, right in time for the summer movie season. It's an animated movie with, with no words. And it has already come out. It came out last year in uh, most nations, meaning that you should definitely wait to see this in theaters on May 31st and not just easily download it right now and watch it at home. Yeah. So anyway, we watched this movie um, because there would be, even if you got a copy of the movie from, like, say, I don't know, Spain, there would be no language barrier because there's no dialogue in this entire movie. Was it Spanish? Yes. It, either that or French, I'm not sure. Um, my favorite part of this, like, I liked the movie. 
But here's the best part. If you don't like the movie, there's still a lot here for you. Because it, the first time that I saw it, I was trying to figure out what the movie was about, like at its core. But then the second time that I saw it, it was all about me finding all the things that... It's like there's a bunch of Easter eggs hiding in it because the film is yeah. set in the 80s. And so it was nice to be like, oh shit, that's Tab. Every one of my aunts drank yeah. that. Like they were addicted to it. Like it was fucking crack. And then every once in a while they'd give me a drink and I'd drink it. And it was the worst shit imaginable. Yes. And then I think, well, how is it that every aunt that I ever had would drink Tab like it was water? And then I realized, oh, it's probably because they were also fucking smoking because it was the 80s and everybody smoked. Yes. Every adult fucking smoked. You, you, you look at the 80s now, like on popular culture, and it's all neon and, you know, uh, like workout sweatpants and, and Jane Fonda and Jazzercise and all that shit. No. Everything was wood, and everything smelled like cigarettes. That was the 80s. Yes. Period. The real but 80s. Was, yeah, that was the real 80s that you won't see on freaking Stranger Things. So I like, you know, um, a fun time could easily be had watching this film and just looking for all of the 80s, the retro 80s Easter eggs. I kind of marked out when I saw Alf on the cover of a magazine. Yeah. And uh, I, I wrote some of them. Um, uh, he has a game of Simon on his shelf. Tab Soda, which fucking sucked. An ad for Ginsu Knives? Yeah. It's been a while. Uh, pay phones. Even the freaking Twin Towers. Yeah. Do you think that 9-11 will still happen in an animal world? Do you think that there are, like, terrorist cats out there in some foreign country ready to strike I, down? I, I, I don't know, animal? but if any animal group were to be terrorists, it would be cats. Because they would want to knock it down. Yeah. Because they're cats. <laughs> I love the fact that it's kind of sort of acceptable that we can all make 9-11 jokes now. Yes. Kind of wonderful. So, uh, what else? Oh, there! I saw an ad for Bufferin? And, and that blew me. Oh, shit, Bufferin. Yeah. I remember Bufferin. I don't think they make that anymore. There was a Doubleman ad that featured twins. Yeah. I remember when every ad for Double Mint Gum had twins in it. I remember when there were ads for Double Mint Gum, for shit's sake. Uh, what else? There was Woolworths. Right before the dog and the robot run into like those punks, I see a poster behind either robot or dog that I'm pretty sure is a poster for the Ramones. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's a Ramones poster, which would work for New York in the 80s. Uh, Wool Woolworths, the old arcade games. I loved seeing a group of tadpoles playing the game Frogger. Yeah. That brightened my day. And it's like, oh shit, there's Wild Gunman. If you look really closely, that's fucking Donkey Kong. <coughs> like, a, like a horse was playing Donkey Kong. Get a donkey to play Donkey Kong. And also, when you're playing Donkey Kong, do you play as a human? I would think in an animal world, if you're playing the game Donkey Kong, you're playing as Donkey Kong. Yeah. But there can't be a human in the game Donkey Kong, so I'm interested in that. I love the fact that when the dog was having a dream, and he dreamed that kids made a snowman, and the snowman came to life, and the dog followed the snowman to a bowling alley where the snowman used his head as a bowling ball. 
the more the the more I talk about this dream out loud. The more this definitely does sound like a fucking dream, so good on the makers of that. So when he throws the bowling ball, it goes into the big Lebowski camera angle. Yeah. Where you see from inside of the bowling ball, and it's like, oh shit, that's a big Lebowski reference in this movie. Uh, the dog has Star Wars toys by the window. Alf. And then... A dog is reading the book, Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. That opens up a whole can of worms. Yes, it does, because what, what, what is a pet here? What is a pet? What is a pet? If anything, the book should be called Stephen King's Cemetery. Yeah. Stephen King's A Cemetery. What other books would be great with animals? Like, uh... Stephen King's misery, except it's like a a dog writer who gets attacked by his favorite author, who's like a hippopotamus or something. Yeah. God, I was going to say a cat would be the dog's number one fan in misery, but no, it's got to be something way bigger. Like, what would Kathy Bates be? I'd hate to say that she's a hippopotamus, but also, that's less a, a fat joke and more that woman's got range. Yes, she does. If anyone could believably be a hippopotamus, it would be uh, Dame <laughs> Dame Kathy Bates. Is she uh, a dame? Is she British? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. But I am giving her that respect. Because that's how much I respect Dame Kathy Bates. Bunny, why don't you hit us with the plot of this movie? A, 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 a very lonely, sad little dog buys a robot off of an infomercial. And it is delivered to his house. And he assembles it, it himself. And they become the bestest of friends. Uh, going out and doing various things. They're dating. They're in a relationship. Okay? Yeah. Uh, you know, they're, they're going places. They're doing things uh, until the stupid dog, because I guess it is a dog, mm -hmm. brings the robot to the beach. What the Let's the robot the play in the water. Okay. What the fuck, dog? Not cool. Robot eventually seizes up on the beach. Yeah, of course. And cannot move. Uh, dog, very upset, but leaves him there. Well, well, to be fair, the dog does go to jail for the robot. Yes, yes, the, the dog did quite a lot to try to get the robot out of there, but first he left the robot there. Yeah. Drag the robot out of the beach to your little dog car, or how have you got here, mm -hmm. which is something that's kind of left open. And then that oh. that is it. Basically, the robot is then dreaming uh, various dreams as he's just stuck on the beach. Can't move, can't do anything. Uh, so I guess the cute and fuzzy bunnies that chopped his leg off were like the last real thing to have happened to him. And that's why we could use the leg as a mark. Yeah. Um, first off, this movie is adorable. It's cute. It is cute. It, it it's is not adorable. Marcel the Shell with shoes on cute. No, but it's still pretty fucking cute. Yes, it is. And when I was watching it, 
I'm watching it with my seven year old and we both loved it, but eventually, like 10, 15 minutes into the movie, I'm like, oh, this is so cute. This is so cute and sweet and adorable. And you know what that means? Shit's gonna get real fucking depressing. <laughs> yeah. Real sad. And Eleanor's like, I love this movie, and I'm just like, brace for impact, Eleanor. Shit's gonna go down. I can feel it in my bones. My corns are acting up. But still, this is a dog that after a while gets another robot and takes it to the fucking beach. Right? And then he and then he has like dog PTSD, post traumatic stress dog, and it's like, oh no, my robot's going into the water. Like, yeah, uh, queer kitty is right. The dog didn't read the manual. No, I I I think RPS has to step in here, and and take that robot away. The gold robot I'm talking about now, take that robot yeah. away from that dog. He is that Absolutely. dog is not a responsible robot owner. True. Absolutely true. He brings the robot, he brings the new robot to the to the uh, beach, but this time he doesn't allow the robot to go into the water. You know what this remind, reminded me of, Bunny? Brian and Charles Jr. Okay. You remember Brian and Charles? Yes. The Yes. British guy makes a robot. I love that movie. This is like that, but for kids without dialogue. Yeah. I love that movie. So, um, this is fun and it's silly. 100%. I saw real bad shit happening. This movie's going to be so sad. Um, odd fact this, so this movie has not had a major release in the United States yet, but it was in the running for Best Animated Feature at the Oscars because it it played at whatever the amount of theaters is necessary for it to be included in the 2023 Oscars. So it was up, it, it was like elemental, which uh, and then that that, uh gay-friendly Netflix animated movie that everyone tells me that I have to see because I'm trans. Nimona or something like that. And then the new Spider-Verse, Robot Dreams, and then Miyazaki's new film, The Boy and the obvious Oscar winner. And, of course, Miyazaki won. Yeah. Because he's a genius. But he wins so much that it, I've gotten to the point where it's like, uh, kind of want to see him fail. Yeah. Everybody, everybody gets one big failure in their life, but like every film that he's done, Miyazaki's son has been fucking brilliant. And it's like, come on, it, I, I'm hoping his next film is the day the laughter. Died. Whatever. What? What's that Jerry Lewis movie? The day the, day the, the clown, clown cried. cried. Yeah, that's his next animated film. But I, oh, I think an, there's an idea. It is a good idea. See, see. Okay, that's what they should do with this movie. Okay, I mean, he's dead now. It's time to release the movie. You should totally release it directly into the public domain. Hell yes. Let us have Hell at yes. it. Yeah. I would love that. That would be so fun and everyone takes everyone takes it and just makes bizarre endings to it. Yeah. Like there was a period in time when people were making Jaws movies. Because that vaguely familiar. Well, because what like um Back to the Future 2 is set in like 2025 or something like that, like 2015, like way in the future. And in that future, Marty McFly walks past a theater showing Jaws 15. 
And so it became this like internet thing of like, okay, so we need to make enough Jaws movies for this film to be true. Yeah. So we have like six years to make, you know, 11 more Jaws films. And so people just started cranking out these like bizarre 70 minute films about, oh no, Jaws is attacking my local community pool and stuff. It, it was a great time. You know what? You know what? It, the day the clown cried could become our next Star Wars uncut. What was it called? Remember we did that episode? Yeah. I think it's Star Wars uncut. I think so. I think is what it was called. You can tell that I'm, you know, in my late 40s getting closer to 50 because I'm a lot more times you hear me saying, what was the name of that thing? Remember with that guy who did the stuff? That's how you can tell that I'm getting yes. it. I do that a lot. That is part but of how it, it happens. Yeah. So this movie does a really great job of uh, answering an age-old question. Do androids dream of electric sheep? No. They have nightmares about losing their dog best friend. Yeah. Not entirely what I expected, but uh, that's all I got for this week's movie. Let's talk about fucking Roger Corman. Okay. Okay, okay. Bitch. Are we going to be talking about fucking Roger Corman? Um, Because that would be bent over a couch. That's a good point. That's a good point. The king of the bees. Uh, I'm the king of the seas. I'm the queen of the seas. And my wife is the queen of the caves. So it's like, it's okay, Roger Corman, that you had smaller boobs than me. You know, it, that must have been difficult for him. Holy shit. Like, his biography on... IMDb is longer than some countries on, uh, on Wikipedia. Holy shit. And you always hear the same thing. You always hear the same thing that he has given his first chance to so many directors and actors and writers and creators. Francis Ford Coppola, Ron Howard, Martin Scorsese, Jack Nicholson, Robert De Niro. Joe Dante, you always hear those names, but you know what you don't hear? Um, that he gave those people his first big break, and then they immediately ran away because that motherfucker was cheap as hell. Yeah. Uh huh. In 1990, he released his uh, book, How I Made a Hundred Movies in Hollywood and Never Lost a Dime. And it's like, yeah, you know how? Because he was cheap as fuck. That's how. Yeah. And e eventually, I feel that like but he Roger served a, Corman, but he served a purpose, and he filled a niche, okay? Because he he did still give these people their first break, you know, and he didn't care if they left. It's just I when you look at at his IMDb, he acted in forty six movies, he directed fifty six movies, he produced. 493 movies. And I feel that, like, over the past few decades, Roger Corman has become a legend, not because he made good films. Oh, no. But that he made a lot of them. It's about quantity, not quality in the world of Roger Corman. So he always found it bizarre that, like, oh, Roger Corman getting a Lifetime Achievement Award. Oh, yeah, good job. 60 years of making shit. Great. Here you are at the Oscars receiving a Lifetime Achievement Award. Has anyone in this audience seen Star Crash? I fucking yeah. doubt it. How many people in that audience at the Academy Awards have seen Chopping Mall? I yeah. fucking doubt. Very many. And so it always blew my mind that this man was like a legend. And like, yeah, he's a legend of shit. When you're like, I need to make a Fantastic Four movie in exactly one month with no budget, otherwise I'll lose the rights. 
yeah, you called Roger fucking Corman. Yeah. But I think that Roger Corman's film history shows you that <coughs> if you make 500 fucking movies, a couple of them gotta be good. Yeah. It's just the law of averages. There are very few of them that are out and out bad. They, yes. They just about all have at least some kind of entertainment value going for them, regardless yeah. of how stupid or cheap they are. And they are stupid and cheap. The only one that I can really think of that is unwatchable is the terror. The terror. I yeah. cannot get through that fucking movie. But then and the, the thing and that... the Edgar Allan Poe movies, his All his Edgar Allan fucking... Poe period. All of those fucking movies, I hated all. Of you them. hated them. I I didn't like them. I did not like them. But here's the thing that that kills me. For a while, I thought the first thing that came to my mind was, why don't we be different and we watch the movies he acted in? A what? Because I thought, because he, he acted, acted in forty five movies, and it's really weird. The the quality of movies that he acted in. So let me let me just go through some. He was in Attack of the 50-Foot Cheerleader. Not a surprise. He was in Sharktopus. He played the part of Beach Bomb. Okay, not a surprise there. He was in the movie Dino Shark, where he played Dr. Frank. Okay, that's not surprising. He was also in the 2004 remake of the fucking Manchurian Candidate. Yeah. He was in Looney Tunes Back in Action. He was in Scream 3. He was in Apollo 13. Yes, he, he was. He was in Philadelphia. He played an FBI director in The Silence of the Fucking Lambs. He was in Godfather Part 2. He was in Godfather 2. Dude, this is fucking wild. But, like, I feel bad because, like, I kind of got excited when I heard fucking Roger Corman died. And I feel kind of bad for that. Well, well, okay, so maybe we gotta that tackle. is what the summer should be. It has uh, to. Places where you find Roger Corman where there should not be be any no. Roger Corman. No, no. We've got to go through all of the movies that he wrote and Damn directed anyway. and produced. We can watch Gas. We can watch The Trip. We can watch the St. Valentine's Day Massacre. We can watch whatever fucking Poe movies we want. We can... Um, oh, and uh, there are some movies we've already done. We can fucking do them again. We can. I don't care. We can do Little Shop of Horrors. We can do A Bucket of Blood. We can do the Wasp Woman. We, we, we do gotta do fucking Star Crash. We've gotta we did do that. Of blood. Huh? We a did bucket of bucket blood. Of we blood have to for do. sure. Yeah, we've gotta do that. There are so many fucking Swamp Women, The Gunslinger, uh, Rock All Night, War of the Satellites, Teenage Caveman, She Gods of Shark Reef, The Creature from the Haunted Sea. That movie sucks. The Raven, The Terror, The Haunted Place, The Tomb of Lycia? I... Okay, so we did a poll, and the poll was, uh, I came up with five different ideas. There was the Summer of Live, where we watch all the Saturday Night Live movies. The Summer of Almost, where we watch uh, this was a high concept one. We watch a bunch of movies that have the same name. Ten minute warning as a uh, famous film. Like there's a Ben Hur animated movie for kids. Uh, the Summer of Tim Curry, rest in peace. He wasn't dead, but every episode we pretend that he was dead and give a different reason why he died. The Summer of Family, where we watch the fucking Fast and the Furious is. And the summer of Taylor Swift, where we go back and watch movies we've already done, but now we call them Taylor's version of parentheses. And then you 
this is the second time that we have predicted a death in our 10 years on the Pope on Film podcast. Because remember when we were doing homework where we would make people watch things? Yeah. And we were watching a, a, a bizarre guy from Oklahoma City's YouTube channel and discussing it. And I said, oh, this yeah. man is an, is an active shooter just waiting to happen. And then like a few months later, he did try and kill a bunch of people at a restaurant. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm psychic. So in our last episode, you said, oh, well, maybe we should find out who's really old and who might die soon. And like, what about Roger Corman? And I said, oh, Roger Corman, can you imagine if he died? You will not believe the shock I had waking up early, making coffee, going to church, because I am a church going guy. Yeah. And then uh, pulling up my computer, pulling up YouTube, looking at my YouTube subscriptions, and I'm subscribed to, like, CBS this, CBS Sunday morning, whatever that Sunday show is that they do. <coughs> and it says in memoriam, and there's a picture of, like, 50 different movie posters, and I'm like, no! Yeah. No! And I marked out, oh my god! This is amazing! Roger Corbin fucking died! I I marked out. So, as much as uh, Tim Curry won the poll, okay, Tim Curry won, hands down, we gotta do fucking Roger Corman. There's so much to do. But now, so okay, much... but since there is so much to do, and since, an and since we are talking about redoing some Corman movies we have done previously, I've got an idea. How uh, yes. can we do a Corman version of all the other potential summer summer ofs? Ooh, okay. So, so we if we're can't... doing remake, then that's the Taylor Swift version. So we got that yeah. covered. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tim Curry must have been in a fucking Roger Corman I'm, movie somewhere. I'm looking. I am looking at all of these movies, and I don't see shit because I, I thought about that as well. But does he have does any it... attachment? to any of the Fast and Furious movies. So this was my idea. My idea was there are so many possibilities that every week we do a double feature. Because so many of his movies are like 72 minutes anyway. Yeah, yeah. So like true. we can watch two Roger Corman movies and a cartoon and it'll still be shorter than most Quentin Tarantino movies. So... I picked two early films and I put him on our cough cough already 1956's Oklahoma Woman which I know is probably a western and not a story about a brave <laughs> trans woman just trying to make ends meet and 1954's crime drama The Fast and the Furious Okay So there you go, right there. Yeah. Boom. I, we gotta do Roger Corman, the summer of Roger Corman. And like I said earlier, if everybody wanted us to do Tim Curry, yeah. just because Tim Curry was in everything that everyone liked. When they were and kids. we were expecting him to die. Yeah. But Roger Corman died. Roger Corman died a few fucking hours ago, right before we were going to announce what we were doing. It's a gift from the gods. Misa say it's a gift. Misa say it's a gift from a god it is. We have to do the summer of Roger Corman. Hey, this is what I think we should call it. 2024. The very cheap summer of Roger. Okay. It'll be our cheapest summer. We've already done. And let's just rip through these. The summer of Star Wars. The summer of Saw. The summer of, Will, Will, of Fred Willard. The summer of Bottoming. 
the summer of COVID exploitation, the summer of yo, and now we're doing 2024, the very cheap summer of Roger Corman. Rest in something. Rest yeah. in cheap peace. Yeah. R-I-C-P. And, and, and to go out for the last summer of, to go, go out on the, on the fucking king. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, so I'm thinking we could do whatever Roger Corman movie that, that we want. But Hell yeah. if it overlaps with one of the other themes that we were going to do, it's like double points or some shit. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with that. Because we did I'm count yo's. Yeah. And counting yo's was kind of fun. So how how can fun. we kind of count this, I'm wondering? Every time I hear uh, Eye of the Tiger or something like that, on I the other day I was driving around town and they played uh, No Easy Way Out. Yeah. From the tortured driving montage of Rocky IV. And I'm like, yeah! Summer 2023! The summer of yo! We're down to two minutes. I know. Yes. So that's next week. Next week, we start our very cheap summer of Roger Corman with 1954's The Fast and the Furious and 1956's The Oklahoma Woman. And then after that, we are going to town. But now that that's next episode. Now that I look back at this episode, the highs and the lows, Ginsu Knives, Tim Curry, Ray Milland, Horse Erotica. We can watch X-Men with the X-Men eyes again. This is going to be so much fun. I gotta say, I think this has been a pretty good episode. This has been a damn good episode. Okay, good. That's what I was going to say, but I didn't want to... I feel like you're the person who makes that distinction, not me. And I didn't want to step on any toes. But Yes, I concur with your assessment, good sir. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Maylan, and on behalf of uh, Q and Max and Eleanor and Jonathan, who showed up for a bit during Jeff, I just got to say thanks for listening, and we will see you next week. You godless heathens. And you do swap on the poopy pit. And you stand robot. And then here comes Eleanor. And you fucking assholes. Oh, wait, I can hear her running. Hurry, there's less than a minute. Hurry. Hey, hey, hey. Nice. Do, 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 do. Oh, we made it to the end without getting cut off. Do, 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 do. Yeah, Tim Curry should have gone. Way, way to hate the podcast. <laughs> Roger.